Good afternoon and welcome back to this week's edition of Navigating the New Normal. We are so glad that you've tuned in with us again as we have another great topic, uh, exercise and mental health. We have two great guests who are with us here today. In fact, uh, in our pre-production meeting, we were able to kind of talk about this topic and I can tell you these two were very excited to talk about exercise and mental health. So I want to remind you that you can text in questions. So you'll see a number at the bottom of the screen. If you will text in your question, your question will be anonymous, but I have my phone with me and that question will come to a person in the room who then sends it to the phone and I'll be able to ask your question to be answered live on this webinar today. But as I said, we have two very special guests with us today. Uh, Josh Haycraft is one of our counselors at Summit Counseling Ministries. And then Jamie Douglas is the fitness director here at First Baptist Church Jackson. But I'm going to let them uh, give a little bit of an introduction about themselves and tell you some of their specialties, some things that they really enjoy doing. So Josh, we'll begin with you. Well, thank you. Uh, so uh, thank you for the introduction. Sure. And uh, I've been at Summit Counseling since 2015, where I started as an intern and been full-time as a contract therapist since 2017. Yeah. Uh, my training is marriage and family therapy. I love premarital counseling, marital counseling, uh, but it seems like the Lord's uh, made grief and anxiety two mm -hmm. of my mainstays. So I like to call myself a generalist, but whatever comes through that door, I will, I will work with the best I can. All right. And Jamie, a little bit of your background. A little bit of my background. So my degree is in kinesiology, which is study of the body and its movement, and my concentration was in fitness and sports science. So for the past 10 years, I've been in group, fit, group personal training, uh, personal training, and also just directing and managing as well. Um, and here at the church, I do fitness and recreation, so upward basketball, day camps, but also I'm in charge of all the fitness aspect of it. So anything in the weight room, spin room, things that go involved with that. So anything that involves pretty much the CLC, I'm yeah. hang my hat on. So. And you've been putting out great videos on Instagram I'm about how to, to do fitness um. stuff at home. Oh, I've, I've enjoyed each and every one of them. Thank you. Uh, let's begin with this. Uh, I know, you know, as we're in this disruption, as we call it here at FBJ, with this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, now we've been kind of sheltered at home for weeks. And it seems that the, the longer you're at home, the more frustrated, the more irritable you can get. Uh, even, you know, we've seen on the news and the newspaper just in the last several days where our mayor has really talked about some of the mental health struggles that come as a result of being sheltered in place and going through difficulties in life. But isn't there some connection between exercise and depression and anxiety in the sense that, that exercise can be kind of its own natural medicine to that? Josh? It, it, it is. And multiple studies have found that exercise, and, and the definition of exercise for this is performing a, some kind of physical activity, walking briskly, to where this kind of conversation can occur comfortably. Yeah. Just doing that three times a week, periods for 30 minutes at a time, does bring down those levels of depression, does bring down those levels of anxiety, and it does make you feel good. So mm -hmm. exercise has been shown in several things to help those kind of things that can follow with being isolated and being away from other people. Hmm. Jamie? And also just being active is going to make you feel better. Like it's, it's a change of scenery from sitting on the couch if you're at home and then getting outside. Um, one thing that I do is I like to walk around the block if I'm at home to start my day just to kind of get my mindset away from I'm at home, just going to hang out at home. But almost giving yourself the opportunity to give yourself something different just to start your day. Hmm. Yeah. Very helpful. All right. You, you talk about walk at home. Let's let's kind of get into some nuts and bolts stuff because, you know, if the person who's listening, you say, well, yeah, that sounds great. And everybody knows that they need to <laughs> exercise more, right? That's not that's not rocket science to most folks. Yeah. But and there's always a but, right? Mm -hmm. The gyms are closed. <laughs> my kids are home. Mm -hmm. um, my workload is more than normal. How would you suggest a person uh, begin to exercise when there are all sorts of excuses of why it's impossible to do right now? One of the hardest things we can do is try something different. Hmm. And so that's a question that we could take probably an hour with and, <laughs> and talk about. 
But number one is you have to decide, is it time to try something different? And now's a perfect time to try something different. Sure, I can't go to the gym. Sure, I can't hang out with my running partners from Fleet Feeder or whatever else. But you do, you have the most powerful tool in your hand right now. You have a phone. You have Google. Yeah. All the exercises that my wife and I are doing, and with our girls, are all based off of home exercises using our own body weight or whatever else. We don't need anything fancy to do it. Mm. I think I answered your question. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And to find something fun. I mean, you, you've got to enjoy what you're doing. And if, if you can't figure out something you enjoy doing, then you got to set a goal. you got to do something that's going to motivate you to get those accomplishments done. Otherwise, nothing's going to change. It, you mentioned, Josh, um, working out with your kids. And mm -hmm. then you mentioned, Jamie, making it fun. So a question that's been submitted to us this afternoon is, how do I, how do I motivate my child to exercise, you know, I, all all of us with you know with kids, uh, oftentimes it seems the kids would rather play a video game than to ride a bike. Mm -hmm. And so, but now again, I mean, we we initially thought this COVID thing was going to be yeah. two weeks, three weeks, but gracious, now it's just getting longer, mm -hmm. and so the problem seems to be getting worse. So how do you how do you motivate a child to exercise maybe with you and to stick with it? I think the first thing you can do is just do it yourself. They will follow you. Mm. You can also set up a routine, set up what the family routine is. I, we discussed earlier, my wife's a teacher and she loves routines. And so she has scheduled out our kids' days. And actually we went a step further and had our kids sign a contract saying these are the things we're gonna do at these times. Contract. A contract. Right, yeah. So that has worked for us. It may not work for every other one. I love understand. it, yeah. And Jamie, I think you had an idea because you had a similar issue. Yeah. So what was? So we have two very different boys. One who's super active, loves to be outside, and another would prefer to level up on Fortnite. That's just the way it is. <laughs> um, but for him, he's very goal-oriented as well. To where if he knows he can make a little bit of money, he'll get out and do something with us. So this, over the weekend, even we were m working in the yard, and he wanted to buy a game. Said, "Okay, if you rake these leaves, you can buy that game." It got him active. He was outside, and it, it worked well. Mm -hmm. The other one kept knocking bushes down, but that's fine. But <laughs> it just, that's just how it works in our family. Just, you have to figure out what is gonna motivate them and yeah. go from there. Uh, now let's talk to the adult for a minute, you know. Um, again, I think everybody who's watching this webinar would say, yeah, I know I need to <laughs> exercise more. But then the question is, just getting started. I mean, mm -hmm. how do I make myself do it? Because for a lot of people, I mean, exercise, it's, I mean, that's like eating broccoli. I mean, how do I make myself do it? What would you say to that person? Well. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> well, being, being in the fitness industry for so long is you do see that struggle of, you know, they get really excited at the beginning of the year and then three months later they fell off. Well, thanks to COVID-19, they fell off a little sooner because maybe their routine changed, maybe things completely just like slammed on brakes. But it's finding the reason why. Like, mm. why do you want to work out? Why do you want to lose those 10 pounds? Why do you want to be able to run a, a mile in under 10 minutes? Like, what, what was the motivation before and what's stopping you now? And trying to figure out, like, okay, well, if it's just because, you know, the gym's closed, well, that's not a good excuse mm -hmm. because you can lift literally anything in your house. So, why, like, what's making you stop is kind of a good reason to kind of look back and then figure out how can you get yourself going again. Mm. I'm a relational guy. I, it, I would not have started my 30 day challenge had it not been for my spouse saying, honey, we're going to do this. Yeah. So for me, it was that. So sometimes having that person that can hold you accountable, because even today there are times where I don't want to get up and do my sets. And she, sorry, Heather, has said the same <laughs> thing, but we've motivated each other through those times to do it. So I think if you, if it's something you want to start doing, reach out to your friends, reach out to the Instagram community, the Facebook community. There are so many groups out there that you can plug into so quickly and so easily that will give you that accountability and that partner yeah. to help you get started. Jamie, you mentioned the, um, the buzzwords of if your goal is to lose 10 pounds, right? Yeah. I mean, all of us, for most of us, I, say, I would say, when, when we begin to exercise, generally our goal is not to feel better yeah. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to see some type of physical change. Mm -hmm. And honestly, you know, this, this, this COVID-19 thing has been such a, a 
a kick in the gut, really, in a lot mm -hmm. of ways. You just don't want to fail at something else, you know? Yeah. I mean, this, all of this kind of, I just, all this kind of makes us some, in some ways feel like, boy, I'm a really terrible husband, <laughs> or I'm a really terrible wife, or I'm a really terrible uh, parent. Yeah. The idea of beginning to exercise, knowing that it's going to be beneficial for mental health, it's just that fear of I'm going to fail, you know, yeah. I, I, I need to lose 10 pounds, I need to lose 20 pounds, mm -hmm. but I do it for three days and I didn't lose that 20 pounds in three days. So what do you say to a person like that? And then certainly that's a psychological issue mm -hmm. as well as the fitness training issue. So what would you say to that person? Let's look at your goal. So, so yeah. losing 10 pounds, that's, a, that's an impressive goal. Arguably, most of us could easily agree with that goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what if someone weighs 100 pounds? 10 pounds is a lot right. of their body weight. Yeah. So let's look at the goal. What is it? Do we need to step it back? Mm -hmm. Let's set an easily achievable goal first. Let's say maybe this first month, if I do want to lose weight, I'll just plan on losing two pounds. Let's just see where this goes. Yeah. Yeah. Just try it out. Back it down a little bit. And also in, in the fitness world, you're looking at Instagram, you're looking at other things where I've yes. heard it, that's people's highlight reel. Yep. They're only gonna that's post right. the things that they're good at and the, like, right. the big ones. And occasionally you see the ones like, oh, I failed this, this lift or I, I didn't accomplish this. But a lot of times you don't see people say, well, I gained two pounds this month. You're, you're <laughs> not gonna see things like that. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's okay to fail because you're gonna learn from that failure how to do it better. So yeah. yeah, so you gained a little weight this month. That's okay because you, you saw what happened and what caused the weight gain. Now you know how to combat that. You know how to do the opposite to kind of go back and forth. So failing is not a bad thing. It's just how, it's the fear of failing that I feel like keeps people from even trying. Mm, great point. Guys, we're getting in some great questions that are being submitted. And so I want to get to some of these. I have, all, I have a bunch of my own questions that I've been wanting to ask, but, but we got some that I, that I need to ask. Now, here's a question. Can you talk about how food and diet play into mental health and your exercise routine? The two are definitely connected. You were talking earlier about the mic macros and, and all of that. So what have you found? In any nutrition, any diet plan, any I'm going to do this, I'm going to do keto, I'm going to do, um, if, you're, you know, if your macros fit, you, you got to find what works for you personally. Hmm. Because again, if someone who wants to try a keto diet, which means you don't really eat carbs, if you love bread and love fruit, that's not the right diet for you. But it's, it's figuring out, okay, this works for me, I'm gonna stick to it. Because if you live in a world and a life where all you have are restrictions, it's gonna mess with your mental state and it's gonna be hard and it's not gonna be fun and you're not gonna stick to it. And if something's not enjoyable, why would you stick to it? Especially if it's not producing any results. So mm -hmm. it's finding what's gonna produce results what do you enjoy doing, and then how to go from that. I feel like all three of those are, go really hand in hand with su su succeeding. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. So what I'm hearing you say is, is, is part of what we need to do is we need to begin with achievable goals. Yes. Yes. That yeah. there is certainly, from the mm -hmm. mental health standpoint, showing success, showing positive mm -hmm. uh, steps forward, yeah. and, and kind of work from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Um, uh, another question that's been submitted, um, and Jamie, I guess this one's probably more for you. What is a safe way for senior adults to exercise at home? Like what specific exercises would you recommend? Well, luckily we have our rock steady program and mm -hmm. um, most of the participants are over 65. That's the reason why we you know, had to stop our program so early. But as long as your doctor's giving you the okay to work out, that's number one thing. But it's figuring out what you physically can do. If you're having um, problems with sitting and standing, then doing a bunch of body weight squats isn't gonna work for you. But it's doing either a different challenge or different way to do it where you sit in a chair and stand up, whether it's um, listening to your own body and when your body's telling you like, that hurts, I can't do that, mm -hmm. then don't do that. You need to figure out, you know, all right, well, if I can't lift 10 pounds, maybe I can lift five. Maybe it's just lifting my arms in a way to do that exercise in a way to, exercise safely um, and then make sure like if you if you do have a problem with your balance make sure you're not exercising around any sharp object you mean like table ends or things that could fall and potentially hurt you so it's making sure your environment itself is safe 
and then listening to your body when something's too heavy or too much. Mm. So just kind of being very aware of how you feel mm. is very is very important, especially mm. with senior adults. Yeah, great. Yeah. Josh, what about the what about the 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 husband or wife or the the, the man or the woman and the, who just there's just so much stress, mm -hmm. stress at work, uh, financial stress, maybe stress about uh, what, what my next career is going to be. That's one of the things we talked about last week is maybe now is the time to kind of think about another career. Um, and, and so you just, you find yourself being more irritable. Uh, you mentioned uh, anxiety is something that you deal with a lot. How does, how does exercise kind of fit into um, the ability to kind of calm down or, or get perspective in life. Well, it's amazing. <clears throat> Anxiety, I, I like to call that something different, uh, an active mind, if you will. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm plagued with it at times. Yeah. What I found is just by doing a little bit of exercise, and especially sticking with my routine, I found that if something was troubling me after a, a brisk walk or riding my bike or what have you, that's usually not in the forefront of my mind anymore. Mm. So it's a way for my mind to clear itself. Now there's a bunch of theories on how that works. Some are, are that it's the chemicals released in the brain. Some are that the brain is actually physically changing just like any other muscle would be in our body. So a lot of ideas behind it. <clears throat> but what I do know is it, it works for me and it yeah. works for a bunch of people. And several studies have shown that, that just, again, 90 minutes a whole week total. You know, just, just, just 30 minutes, three times a week, decreases so much overall anxiety and depression in people. And, and an interesting thing is there was a, a one-year longitudinal, longitudinal study completed on people that had both depression and anxiety. And for some of them, they started an exercise routine. At one year later, at the end of this study, they found that those that stuck with the exercise, and it was just that moderate, like I said, that 30, day, 30, 30 minutes, three times a week, was that they did not relapse into those old problems that they had before. Really? Hmm. So uh, there's a lot of neat things that occur with it. So my question is, why not just try it? Yeah, it's free. It's free. It's free. <laughs> Walking's free. <laughs> just try it. Yeah, right. Y you know, I, I love your definition of anxiety, anxiety mm -hmm. being an active mind. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm, <laughs> I'm certainly diagnosing myself with active mind. <laughs> I, think I, I think I prefer to call it active mind <laughs> over anxiety. Yes. But what about the connection between what you just talked about? Because you, you, you talked about how exercise can kind of help settle an active mind a little bit. What about the connection between exercise and sleep? Because I, I know particularly me, I find sometimes it's hard for me to sleep because my mind is active. Yeah. Yes. So what's the connection between exercise and sleep? Same studies for the benefits of the mental that I've read or the same thing for the physical, and I'm living that today. It, prior to this little 30-day challenge, you know, the active mind would get a hold of me. I'd be lucky to get three to four hours of sleep right. a night. Well, now I have no problem laying my head down at nine, and I'm, the alarm's waking me up at 6.30, <laughs> if not the two-year-old. That hasn't happened before. Yeah. And a lot of it has to do too with, all right, so when you exercise, you're gonna increase um, oxygen, how like how it goes into your body and how it comes out, simple way of putting it. So when that increase, your, the able, your body's ability to process oxygen and your blood levels in your body, like with your resting heart rate, mm -hmm. the more you exercise, the lower your resting heart rate gets, which is great, that's a great thing to have, so I'm gonna too low. But the good thing is that when you go down to sleep and you lay down, your resting heart rate starts lowering. And so some people have an easier way of falling asleep when their heart rate's a little bit lower. So with exercise, as you're able to exercise and you're really pushing your heart rate through these, these workouts, you're strengthening your heart because your heart's a muscle, it beats 24 seven, hopefully. And the good thing is that the more you exercise, the better in shape your heart's getting the better oxygen intake and outtake that's going on. So it's gonna improve your sleep just naturally because you're getting in better shape more than just your outer appearance but your inner muscles as well. Okay. So it really helps now, with that. Now here's a question that I have for you. Is there a time of day that is better to exercise? When you're gonna work out, all is based on 
when you're going to work out. If you love working out in the mornings, that's going to be best for you. If working out at night's best for you, that's what you're going to do. But the what I'll tell anybody is the best time to work out is when you're actually going to do it. Hmm. Because otherwise you're not going to do it. So more important to do it than to worry about the time yeah, of day. Don't worry about the time. It's just same thing with eating like is eating a lot at night, more important than eating. It's there's a bunch bunch of studies, but you've got to figure out what's going to work for you. Yeah. Ultimately. Yeah. Great. Um, I had another question that's submitted. Um, any tips for trying to create an at-home gym? Are there certain <laughs> basic items to get started, particularly that you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on? Yeah. Um, so the best things you can get. Um, so if you if you're working out in your, your garage, you want to make sure there's some type of protective material down on your floor, whether it's like a carpet, whether it's like a matted horse stall mats are really great and keeps it from shattering your garage floor. Uh, if you're on like a building on top of an apartment complex and sorry for your neighbors, yeah. <laughs> but um, set up small set of dumbbells, something that's going to allow you to do the, the correct rep range you're looking for. Um, and then a, as time goes on, building more towards that. So starting off with at least very simple dumbbells, make sure your floors are protected. Uh, make sure, I mean, if you need a cardio equipment, jump ropes as simple as it can get for yeah. your heart rate up. Yeah. Um, but then over time, you're going to be able to add more things. So if you can add a squat rack, if you can add barbells, you can add plates, it's going to get more expensive. But for the baseline, make sure you've got some dumbbells, make sure you've got um, something that's going to allow you to continue these workouts going on. But, but dumbbells are the best thing to start with. Hmm. Great. Josh, this is a great question that was submitted. What about the spiritual component of exercise? You know, where the Bible says our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So what's the, the connection there? Are, are Christians, in a way, compelled to take care of their bodies because of the, um, w what the Scripture has to say about our bodies being the temple of the Spirit? It's a very individual question as well because the first question I have is, what is a temple to you? Are we looking at a, a Solomon-style temple? Are we looking at a church-style temple? Are we looking at a prayer room that's in our closet? Something small and modest. What is your individual goal? How do you view it? If you view that you need to look like Hercules, okay, <laughs> then, then by all means, yeah. help yourself. I, I don't personally read it that way. I yeah. think we should take care of our bodies, and we know that exercise is a part of that. As long as the exercise doesn't overtake my overall mission is being a Christian and doesn't become the overarching thing for what I live for instead of God himself. And I don't think it's really a problem. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of the balance of, yes, we need to be good stewards of yeah. the body that God has given us. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we recognize what scripture says that we are to discipline ourselves for the purpose of godliness. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's to make sure that we don't get things out of balance. I, I guess one, one struggle we can have uh, is we can we can run the risk of worshiping our bodies. Yeah. Yes. And so all of our self-esteem, all of our all of that comes from the the our physical the way we look physically, yeah. and that that can become a negative. Yeah. Well, how we view ourselves. How we view ourselves. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, Jamie, here's a question for you. We've, you are doing a great job of submitting questions. I mean, this is great. We need to do this again. Yeah, they keep coming in. Um, online exercise options can be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. We could be worshiping from, uh, worshiping, I wish. <laughs> we could be exercising is what the person said. We could be exercising from morning until night. Yep. How much exercise do we need each day and how many days a week should we exercise? Josh, you answered that really well. The minimum you really need is 30 minutes, three days a week, so 90 minutes total a week. That should be like your base minimum. Um, I know that for athletics and like for students, they're looking at 60 minutes a day. They need that hour of recreation or hour of PE. That's really great for them. So I think, again, it comes back to what your goals are, what you're able to do, and then kind of find a good piece, like what's going to be the right puzzle piece to fit for, yeah. your, for your schedule, for what you're able to do, based on the equipment that you have. But ultimately, I would say for anybody, I mean, if you can just get out and walk 10 minutes a day, every day, just, just move your body. It's going to make a big difference. Yeah. And, and the 90, let's so say 90 minutes a yeah. week, um, generally 30 minutes, three days a week. Am I right, though, that it doesn't have to be 30 continual minutes. Mm -hmm. It could be three sets of 10 minutes yeah. in a day. Yep. 
So Absolutely. it's 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 the amount of time overall, yeah. not necessarily yeah. the amount of time back to back. Exactly. Correct. And people have better, you know, they have better results if they do it all at once at a higher intensity. Sure. But just for a general population, for just very, very basic, just for general health, that's usually the best way to go. Yeah. Just, yeah. just move. That's yeah. what you sure. gotta do. Josh, you know the we're created in the image of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, God is relational. And so God has created us as relational beings. Mm -hmm. What does exercise, and particularly the relational component of exercise, what does that, why is that important for us? And, and, and I think, let me just give you kind of where I'm going with it. One of the things that we've talked about this COVID-19 pandemic, as, as awful as it's been, and none of us want to have to do this over again, but one of the things that we have noticed, just trying to find silver lining, is that you know, for a lot of, we hear a lot of folks talk about how it's given them more family time. Mm -hmm. And so an opportunity to spend time with your spouse or opportunity to spend time with your kids walking around the neighborhood, biking. What do you say about that, the relational aspect of exercise and how that helps our mental health? God, that, I think anything that can build a relationship up, especially with your family, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's, that's so wondrous and it's so wonderful to do. Uh, speaking personally, it's been great for us. Has the COVID been a life changer? Yes, in so many different <laughs> yeah. ways. Yesterday, our 17 year old asked me to go for a bike ride with her. Well, that's a memory I'm gonna cherish it's forever. Gold. Gold. And yeah. I hope she does as well. You can do so much, cause not only are you helping yourself when you work out, you're also pulling your spouse with you or they're walking with you as you're doing this, you're gonna do something. You're gonna communicate with them as well. Mm. So if you're in the middle of a high intensity workout, you're probably not gonna be talking, <laughs> but afterwards you will. Yeah, just a shared experience. A shared experience. Is a good thing. It mm -hmm. is. Fair. And there's something to be said about having a workout partner, right, Jamie? There is. So even, I mean, there's countless studies to where up to 200% extra is going to be your like almost motivational tool that if you have a workout partner it could increase your workout by almost 200 percent not only in time but in effort and disability to actually do it and that's i mean that's done by national studies but 200 percent is a big number to get you from zero percent chance of working out on your own to not only working out but doing a great workout with somebody else so i'm basically 200 more times likely to work out if i'm working out with somebody else yep. than if i'm doing it alone as long as they're motivating and not encourage you to sit on the couch <laughs> Not with want them. To work out. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's a great, I mean, that's, that's why group fitness is so popular because wow. you've got the camaraderie and you know someone's waiting on you. And that's just a huge encouragement to have that. Mm. Which is why I think the blow up in the online community for working yeah. out as well. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Here's a great question, and I'm, Jamie, you're gonna be jumping up and down about this I'm one. I'm sure. <laughs> is there a place that I can go where recommended exercises will be posted. For instance, links for the elderly, for families, et cetera, anything on Facebook or other social media platforms. Well, we do have. <laughs> our, <laughs> I know you'd like that. Our, uh, our FBJ fitness page. Um, we've been working really hard on pr providing more content for recreation games you can play, some fitness games you can do, and modifications you can do based on what you have and what you don't have. Um, and just on our, our Facebook page as well, our, our fitness instructors would love to help if anybody needs help, just to find me on Instagram, Facebook, or email, and be happy to get you connected with people. Can you give us an address for that, or is it? Yes, you can email me, which is. Well, or the, or the social media post would be. Yeah, the, um, the best ones to go to would be our prior Instagram page, which is FBJ Fitness, and then comment on any of those, and we'll get you connected. Okay, yeah. all right, great, super. Um, we have just about a minute left, mm -hmm. and so, Josh, I know with, with Summit Counseling, one of the things that we've been wanting to make sure people know about is the ability to do telehealth. So will you share just a little bit about that? If somebody has questions about uh, experiencing depression or experiencing anxiety and, and they'd like to talk with someone, what would you, what would you say? Don't hesitate. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't hesitate to reach out. You can give us a call. You can give Miss Joy a, a phone call and she'll definitely set it up. I've been using uh, Zoom and other HIPAA compliant telehealth platforms for about a month. And I have not noticed any change except for 
clients and myself seem a little more comfortable. We're in our own home. We're more relaxed. I can wear a shirt and I can wear shorts. Yeah. And they're comfortable as well. So it helps it helps take some of that discomfort of seeking help with these problems out of it. Yeah. I've been a huge fan of it. Wonderful. And then Jamie, just in the last few seconds that we've got, <laughs> I know that right now with COVID-19, uh, the CLC as we call it here, Christian Life Center, there's a lot of opportunities for folks that right now they're not able to take advantage of yeah. because of the regulations on sheltered home. But once things open up, and we've already talked about the things that you're doing on social media yeah. that can help people at home, but once things open up, what are some opportunities for people to be involved in fitness here at First Baptist Jackson? Yeah, so we have a wonderful group of uh, aerobics instructors who teach classes throughout the day. Uh, we have our fitness on demand where you can go in and almost pick any class you'd want to do like you do at home on those platforms. Well, we've got great spin rooms. We've got an indoor walking track. We've got basketball courts. I mean, the opportunities are endless that we have just in our own facility. So really great opportunities that you can work out here at the church. Great. Well, listen, thank you all very much for, for being here today. We've had great response, people asking <laughs> questions. And so obviously this is, is really met a need. And we want to thank you all for joining in again today. I want to remind you uh, that you're welcome to contact Summit Counseling 601-949-1949 or to send an email to Summit Counseling at jwoods at fbcj.org and we can get you connected to one of our great counselors at Summit Counseling. And as you've been reminded, you know, you don't have to wait for all this COVID-19 stuff to end. There are opportunities for you to find help with people over the phone or Zoom meeting or whatever. And so we really want to encourage you to take advantage of that great resource of Summit Counseling. And then also remind you of the social media platforms with FBJ Fitness. Uh, lots of great uh, ideas for you to be able to do exercise at home, uh, not just you, but also with your entire family. And so, uh, again, we want you to know that we are here for you. We want to help you. You don't have to walk through all of this alone. Thank you so much for joining us again today. We hope to see you next Tuesday at 2 o'clock as we continue to navigate the new normal. Thank you for joining us.